All right, today doing a, uh, this is a 2008 Grizzly 700. We're gonna be replacing the rear hub on this one and the brake pads. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so you're gonna start off removing your wheel. <clears throat> your lug sizes will vary. Then on the hub nut, there's a little, little notch in it. So you gotta take that notch out so that way you can get the hub nut off. As you can see, it's uh, 27 millimeter. I actually left it on there. Um, kind of a bad edit there. I'm showing you right there, you can see one of your brackets bolts for your uh, caliper. Your bracket bolts. <clears throat> There's one. And then there is two. I'm gonna try to show you it right there. You can see it, and I'll try to point it out right underneath my finger there. So there's two of those, and they are 13 millimeters each. Anyways, you uh, remove those. I'm gonna do here in a second. I'll try to speed up the video a little bit. So you can see, uh, Taking the caliper off, you just remove those and pull the caliper off. And just like that, you pull the caliper off. Now, you can take a C clamp, a decent sized C clamp, and you can actually use that with the old pads. Here, I'm just showing you how bad the pads actually are. They're totally gone. Anyway, you take one of the old. Uh, pads and you can use that to compress the cylinder back here we're just taking off the uh, hub nut make that loose so that way we can replace the hub that's all you gotta do on the hub take that hub nut off there you put your new hub on you'll see here in a, in a few minutes uh, that we'll put the pardon the dog barking in the background but we'll put the new hub on here and you'll see once you put the hub nut on i'll show you here later in the video where the little notch is that you uh have to tap down to keep it locked into place now going to your upper cylinder you're gonna undo those this is how you do this if you don't have to take the entire caliper off by then you i had to take the caliper off um in my circumstances because of where the the lead line, the bleeder, excuse me, the brake line came in. So I had to take mine off. Normally you wouldn't have to though. You pull your caliper off, you pull the bolt out that I'm gonna show you here in a second, put your new brake pads in. Um, you can, you take the, uh, the top of your uh, master cylinder off here, compress that uh, caliper in, and it'll make that level go up a little bit it'll rise inside that master cylinder put your new brake pads in put it all back together like you'll see in the video good to go you don't have to bleed it that way um, in my case i had to bleed these so i'll show you how to bleed them as well either way i'm putting a little bit of loctite or uh, excuse me not loctite definitely not loctite uh put an anti-seize um on each of the studs here on the hub <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit under the, the, uh, the hub nut as well. Kind of went a little out of order here. But yeah, with the, without have, doing it the bleedless way where you don't have to bleed your brakes, it's a lot easier. Um, like I said, with, with the way my brake line comes into this caliper, I had to take it off. It's an aftermarket caliper. Anyways, just showing here, you don't need a whole lot. Some people just go way overboard with the crap and get it all over everything. Uh, don't do that. You don't need that much. As you thread on your lugs, it will spread it throughout the threads. Same thing on that hub nut. Put a little bit on there. Sorry for the, uh, the bad shot. And I'm just spreading it around. I'll show you. 
here after a while on that hub nut. We'll tighten it up. And then I'll show you where you're gonna take your your punch and tap down on it. And that's basically to keep it from loosening itself. You see right there that little notch that's in there? You punch that down right on top of it. So you're gonna collapse that nut with a a punch. You're gonna tap it down, creating like a little divot. Tapping it down doesn't take a whole lot of force. You just kind of want it to get down kind of evenly on both sides just to prevent that nut from, you want to say, coming unraveled. You can. But, anyways, I had to take my whole brake line off. Like I said, normally you do not have to do this. I would recommend not doing it if you don't have to. Um, I had to because, like I said, the brake line was right in the way of the bolt that you need to take out in order to release. Uh, both your brake pads So <clears throat> Taking that caliper now and I'll show you How you take the uh, The old brake pads out of there and you see that one bolt there on the one side it comes through on that side and On the back side of the top top of it there. You'll see it's a hex head um, Like an allen head. And it's a number five and uh, once I get it oriented right here, plug it in right there, and she should back right out for you. You take that bolt out, and you can take the old pieces of junk out of there, because they are pieces of scrap metal at this point. <clears throat> Clean it up with some uh, brake cleaner. Got a little bit of brake fluid going everywhere. Um, anyways, you put that C-clamp on there. You can, like I said it earlier, you can put the uh, old brake pad on there and you can use that for a flat surface. Compress it all together. Um, in this case, um, I didn't want to put that junk brake pad back in there because it was so thin it would have just bent anyways and probably caused more damage. So it's solid up inside of there. So I took my uh, half-inch ratchet and I'll put it up inside of there like that. And then go ahead and force it down, and that compresses that cylinder anyway. So once it's compressed, you got to make sure that little clip, well, I'll show you here in just a second, I'll point it out, but make sure that clip is in place, that's your tension clip, so you don't have a bunch of rattling as you're going. That clip right there, that silver thing. Put your new brake pads right down in there. That one just slides in. This one goes... Um, over top of the opposite end that's like so and then you'll see the two loop on the left there's two uh loops if you want to say or holes where this bolt actually comes down through the opposite direction of what i was showing you i'm not sure why i did that but anyway you poke that bolt back through the one took out a little bit ago <clears throat> and that holds your brake pads into place so put it in like that, make sure it's all the way through, make sure it's going into the opposite side of your caliper, so that way you're not stripping it out or cross-threading it. And then you're going to get it tightened up. Here I'm just using the number 5 on an uh, impact. Sorry for my crushed fingernail there. Anyways, you got a nice little gap between the brake pads. I'm trying to show you there, making sure they're spread. So that gap right there, you're gonna slide that right over top of your rotor when you go to put this caliper back on. And you'll find it's pretty easy to do. It's not brake brake jobs are not as hard as some people will make them seem. Anyways, there's your bracket. You got to get it lined up, and then you're gonna slide it right on top of your. Oops, I went to the a little bit too far over there but anyways I'm just trying to show you how it slides on there so I'll show you again here <clears throat> that bracket goes back behind your rotor and as you can see your brake pads slide right over top of the rotor and you got to get your two holes that I showed you earlier with your two bolts your caliper bolts right there we can kind of see where one goes 
Get those lined up with uh, your bracket. Get them put back in, get them snugged up. I'm not sure what your torque settings are, but uh, your foot pounds, just get them to where they're nice and snug. Um, and maybe you just uh, eighth of a turn past that. That way you're not stripping them out. I'm putting my brake line back on. Like I said, you shouldn't have to do this. Um, and you can use dot three or dot four on these grizzlies. I've got dot four that I've been using. Anyways, you're gonna top off your reservoir. And your upper cylinder. And once you get the cap back on, getting it cleaned up. Make sure there's no excess stuff, uh, you know, brake fluid dripping around the outsides of it or whatnot. Make sure your seal goes down. Make sure your seals collapse when you put it in there so it's flat. Clean up all the edges around it that I was pointing out earlier. Put your two screws in there. Get them nice and snug. And definitely don't over tighten those because they will strip out That's very amazing. easy. Once you get that done, come down here and you're going to find your little bleeder valve. You pop off the little rubber cover that's on top of it. If you don't have a rubber cover, you should definitely get one because it could lead to nightmares if you get a bunch of mud and nastiness up inside of there and dirt. Anyways, take your box then of your wrench, 8 millimeter, put it on there. And you're going to, just this is how you loosen it here. I'm just showing you how to loosen it. And what you do <clears throat> is you put that on there. I'm just loosening it to get this stuff pushed through because there's so much air right now. So we're pumping it. But when you're actually bleeding these, it's really hard to show. Um, so I'll just explain it. You're going to leave that wrench on there. You're going to do uh, the very back right side of the wheeler first. I've already done that side, so I'm just doing the left side now. But you're going to have this tightened up. You're going to pull your uh, your brake handle about three times. And then the third time, you're going to hold it all the way down. Squeeze it all the way in. And then you're going to take that boxed in 8 millimeter, Loosen up your bleeder valve enough to where you suddenly you'll see brake fluid start coming out. As soon as you see the brake fluid coming out, you retighten it. Pump your brakes three times again. Hold it. And then do the same thing. And you're going to repeat that process several times until you feel your brake handle your um your brake actually tightening up on you you'll feel it getting tighter and tighter each time you should if you're not feeling it getting tighter and tighter you may have a leak in your line somewhere you may have a bad uh caliper um could be primarily it's going to be those two things but anyway there's your brake bleeder valve that's the thing that uh pointing out earlier you got the rubber cap off it off putting your box stand on there but that is how you bleed your brakes once you get them on there if uh if you did it the other way where you don't have to take your brake line off you're pretty much done you don't have to do this part um once you get your uh your master cylinder topped back off with some fluid um which you shouldn't even have to because it's just going to compress the um it's going to force a lot the excuse me the fluid back up into the line and it's actually going to cause that level to rise it might even overflow a little bit on you on your uh, upper reservoir there on your master cylinder if that's the case it's fine just make sure you clean up all the drippage and everything put your lid uh your your seal back on there put the cap back on get it snugged up don't over tighten it like i said earlier um and start squeezing your handle um it should tighten right up on you just because you don't have any air in the lines because you forced the fluid backwards if that makes any sense so that's a lot easier way if you don't have aftermarket calipers or one with a brake line in the way like this it is far easier to do but if you've got to do the uh bleeder valve way this is how you do it I said you start with your furthest point first and then your nearest point and because you have two separate uh, master cylinders you've got one for the front brakes and one for the back the one for your back is on your left hand side of your handlebars opposite side of your throttle <clears throat> but you're going to take that like i said squeeze it three times hold it at the same time you're holding it 
you're going to open up that bleeder valve and then you'll feel the the brake handlebar go all the way back if it's already all the way back it's fine as long as you see a little bit of brake fluid coming out you retighten it and you repeat the process until it is nice and tight when you're pulling that brake handle it's only coming back a little bit before those brakes are engaging and just like that folks that's how you do it thanks for watching at doing it yourself and thanks for doing it yourself remember i am not a professional nor do i play one on tv do this at your own risk thanks for watching please like subscribe comment and share